Welcome back to the channel, slightly different video today. I wanted to do a video on just how much it really costs to use different devices around your house. Because whilst I am a barrister who is here to help you understand law, I also thought it might be useful to get a little device which tells me exactly how much power something is using and therefore I can calculate what it costs. And as it happens, I got one which will tell me not just how much power it uses, but how much it is costing as well. Because I can set the unit price per kilowatt hour on this little device, which I will link in the description below, by the way, so you can go and check it out. It's an affiliate link, so I get a little kickback just for full disclosure, but you can put in it what your price per kilowatt hour is. Ours is about 33 pence. So I thought I would check out a few things like the fridge, the kettle, a hair dryer, the dryer, as in the clothes dryer, um, a laptop, and to dispel the myth whether or not a laptop continues to use power when you close the lid, and all of these kind of things. So without further ado, let's get on and see what power these use. So kicking off with a standard American fridge freezer with ice and water dispenser, I had this running for a period of 16 days and it used 40 kilowatt hours. So I thought that would be a reasonable amount, about half a month. But like a numpty, I forgot to put in the kilowatt hour pricing on this, which I know to be 33 pence. So simple maths, 40 kilowatt hours at 33 pence is roughly 13 pounds. Pro rata for the month is roughly 24 pounds, which over the course of the year is 288 pounds which quite frankly surprised me. Next with a little jiggery pokery and the assistance of an extension cord I managed to plug the dryer into this device and remembered to put the price per kilowatt hour in. I threw a towel in there and set it for 30 minutes and then looked eagerly at the device to tell me how much power this was using. Unsurprisingly it immediately started drawing quite a significant amount of power, 2.4 kilowatts to be precise but to be fair it did hold fairly steady at roughly 2.4 kilowatts so I sat here eagerly awaiting the increase in cost to tell me how much it was going to use. Not a minute later and it's used its first pennies worth. Fast forward 10 minutes or so and it's cost roughly 13 pence, which over the course of an hour is obviously going to be roughly 78 pence. Next over to the kettle socket, because kettles are notorious for using lots of power, I want to see just how much in reality it costs to boil a full kettle of water. And it's now and for the first time that I question what these numbers on the kettle mean, because it certainly doesn't correlate to the number of cups of tea that one can produce with this kettle. So it's back to base and we're off and running. So again, a fairly consistent power consumption of 2.8 kilowatts. So let's see how long this takes and what it will cost. The results may surprise you. So just coming up to the boil now and three minutes, 35 seconds. One boiled kettle of water cost the grand total of five pence. Next up we have an electric blue Dyson fan heater which also cools as well. This is the non-air purification kind. Let's crank her up to full power at a scale of 1 to 10 and a temperature of 23 degrees which is a little bit tropical even for me. Unsurprisingly being a heating device pulling a fairly consistent 2 kilowatts so this is going to cost roughly 60 pence to 1 pounds per hour to run. Averaging out at about 80 pence an hour, assuming three hours a day, over the course of a month you'll spend roughly 67 pounds. Assuming you use this for half a year, that's 400 pounds a year to use one of these devices to keep yourself warm. The good news however is if you turn this all the way down to zero degrees for cooling for the summer months it's going to take the power consumption all the way down to only around 40 watts, significantly reducing the power and helping to keep you cool in the summer. Speaking of cooling, that gave me an idea to test my air purifier, which of course just cools and purifies the air. This runs at a cool 30 watts or so. The next illuminating experience of my electrifying journey is to see how much power these Philips LED soft white bulbs use. There are two of them connected on the same circuit, either side of the piano, underneath which is the floof's favourite spot. 
Between the two, they use a little under 30 watts, which again is under one pence per hour. Next is my somewhat oversized LG OLED 77 inch TV. Now the thing with TVs, especially large ones, is that many people believe they use lots of power even when they are on standby, but this theory is ultimately debunked. I was, however, very interested in how much power it used when I fired it up. Interestingly, it started off at between 40 and 50 watts and naturally increased the power consumption the brighter the TV was. Although because I used the energy saving mode, even on the brightest of scenes, it didn't go much beyond 80 watts. Which impressively is a significant reduction from 163 watts on the standard dynamic range and 321 watts for the high dynamic range. Next, I decided to charge my phone, which is an Apple 13 Pro Max, to see how much power that would use, which literally only used seven watts using a standard USB charger, which is under one pence per hour, so negligible, really. Next, I grabbed the wife's hairdryer because obviously I don't own one. This is a GHD. It pulled 1.4 kilowatts. I let it run for a couple of minutes or so, and literally it uses roughly a couple of pence every couple of minutes. Next was a really interesting one. This is a MacBook Pro 16 inch with the lid closed. I wanted to test the theory as to whether a laptop continues to draw power when the lid is closed. Indeed, it did continue to draw power between 15 and 30 watts or so. It really jumped about a bit, a bit like a lamp, if you remember the amount of power that the lamps used. And it took quite some time before the laptop would actually come down to virtually zero, jumping around quite a bit from 8 watts to 25 watts, eventually coming down almost to zero. But that did take around a minute or so. So there it is. I thought that was quite an interesting experiment to go across a few different items to see how much power they drew. I was quite surprised by some of them. Let me know in the comments which one you were surprised by. I was particularly surprised by the kettle costing so little, the TV costing so little, because I use it on the energy efficient mode rather than the high dynamic range, which admittedly would look a lot better if you want to settle in for a good film night. But ultimately this does go to show that it is the cumulative effect of all these different items all being used together all at the same time or around the clock that ultimately add up to your bill. So I'm sure there are several calculators out there, there are several spreadsheets that you can keep track of the power that you use on these devices. So I would say if you're going to boil a kettle for some tea, don't worry too much about the cost, unless of course you've got dozens of different devices that are all drawing power throughout the day or all at the same time. I hope you found this interesting. Please do hit the like button and subscribe, particularly if you like this new style of video. And as always, thank you for watching.